space, the final frontier, has always been a fascination for us humans to potentially one day explore the cosmos and really venture out forth into the universe. And I suppose it really goes down to something very innate within us, this innate curiosity to potentially understand and figure out our place in the universe. But certainly it is an aspiration for many of us, especially many children, to one day go to space to become astronauts. There is something very majestic about it. But then there's also this question of how realistic of a probability could actually do that, at least leading up to this point. I can recount an experience from my childhood when I was actually attending a space camp in New Zealand because, again, most of my friends would know as a very young boy, I was really fascinated with space. I wanted to become an astronaut. So I went to the space camp. I had the chance to meet a NASA astronaut and I had a chance to chat with him. And it was, again, incredible because I was looking at and I was meeting a hero of mine. And so we had this conversation where I proceeded to ask him if I could go to space one day. And to my absolute shock, even in retrospect, he actually told me, because of where I was from, that there was no space program. And so if I wanted to become an astronaut, it would be very unlikely. And I would probably have to try and get in with, let's say, a NASA program of some sort. But again, it would be very difficult. Again, I have no idea why he said that to nine-year-old me, but certainly it shattered my dream. But the fact is, what he said was still largely true. Space and its exploration has largely been quite restrictive and mainly limited to very powerful nations and almost absolutely funded by governments. And so, of course, it is very rigorous. And so all the progressions that we've seen, all the exploration of space that we've had so far has been by governments, powerful governments around the world. Not all governments, only some, the few. And so the chances of private people actually going to space is practically impossible. Again, I was told the truth as a child. But today and tonight, as I'm having this late night chat with you, we are part of some rather incredible developments. Of course, only over the past few days, Sir Richard Branson has actually taken the Virgin Galactic flight, which, by the way, has been many years in the making. I, I first read about it when I was in boarding school, and now it's happened. But the first suborbital flight, a private one, and he's actually gone to suborbital heights. And very soon, shortly, we'll see the same from Jeff Bezos on Blue Origin. And also, not to mention Elon Musk. And so what we are seeing now is actually the start of a new space race, a space race of billionaires between three companies at the moment, largely. So Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin from Jeff Bezos and also, of course, SpaceX from Elon Musk. And together, they culminate in the new space race of billionaires as they're really all battling out to conquer space. They are not publicly funded. They're all private companies from entrepreneurs. And again, now we're seeing them actually doing it. And this private space race of the billionaires is actually very significant in terms of what it means to human space exploration. And tonight I'll give you four reasons of why I think that's the case. The first is really this idea of accessibility. This billionaire's space race will actually make space more accessible. At this moment you might be thinking, Melvin, how could that be the case? Because of course it is very expensive to get a ticket, and certainly it would be. At the moment, I believe to actually go on the Virgin Galactic flight, the cost is actually $250,000 per flight. And again, you're really only on the suborbital heights for about five minutes, I believe. So you're essentially paying $50,000 per five minute that you're there. And so it is very expensive in that sense. And I believe for Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin, the again, the price isn't really announced in terms of ticket, but they had a bidding recently for it. And I believe the amount was about 20 million, if not mistaken, which is also very expensive. And for Elon Musk's SpaceX, we don't really have any ideas yet. So you might be saying, in the face of what we're seeing so far in its commercialization, Melvin, how is it accessible? The people who are currently signed up are people like Justin Bieber and Leonardo DiCaprio. And so certainly, how is it accessible for us? And yes, you are absolutely right. It is very expensive now, but we are not focusing on the big picture here because what's going to happen is that as these flights actually happen more and more, 
and as the scale actually goes up, the ticket price would actually go down. The reason why it's so expensive now is really basic economics. It is expensive because, of course, right now there are not many flights, they are just starting out, so the tickets themselves are very expensive. But truly, if these companies were to commercialize furthermore and scale up, then we naturally and inevitably will see the price actually go down and it will become cheaper through time and certainly more accessible to more people. And of course, if this is a growing industry, we will also see more and more entrance into the scene which will also contribute to the economic forces that makes it more accessible. But the point of accessibility really has to be explained from the idea of how it was so restricted before. As I mentioned, to actually go to space in the past was such an expensive endeavour. Again, governments that actually had space programmes, they would spend even up to decades to plan a mission to actually go to space. And so it only meant that they had potentially one launch, maybe 10 years or more in the making, and only a certain amount of people could go. And these people had to be highly trained. And so again, it would mean not everyone would fit the bill. When we think about an astronaut, we think about a person of a certain caliber. They would train, for example, for more than 15 years of your life, maybe even, to just become an astronaut. But so far of what we've seen, the people who are lined up Aside from the celebrities, we're actually seeing more diverse candidates. So far with the Virgin Galactic flight, which has been suborbital, that has of course been the company employees. But again, other ones lined up will be also other private citizens of all sorts of statues, of course, ethnic backgrounds and nationalities. And also with the Blue Origin flight, we're hearing about potentially one of the world's youngest person to go to space, an 18-year-old who has actually um, won the auction. And again, debatable how much it was, but the point is the overall demographic and the profile of these sort of people that would go to space will become so much more diverse than ever before. It won't just be a highly trained uh, military person or engineer um, of, a certain, of a certain fitness level. It would now include all sorts of people that could potentially could actually go to space through these private means. And it truly is very incredible. Even for Elon Musk's SpaceX flight, one of the person that's currently lined up is actually a cancer survivor and certainly not the person who is the most fit in a sense, but again, the person that will be going on to that mission too. So this to me is incredible, again, highly representative of the accessibility of space. And I hope what we see from this, and I believe what we'll see from this inevitably in the next 15, 20 years really in the scene, or maybe even 10 years or less, is just how accessible it will become. There will be a democratization that happens because of the space race, that the commercialization and of course the commercial and private economic forces will actually affect and bring more inclusiveness to the final frontier that we're talking about. The second aspect is also the economic benefits overall from this macro standpoint, which I think is rather exciting. If you are anywhere at all aware of how it was so expensive really to launch something into space for commercial reasons, whether it is a satellite or cargo, we are talking about costs between about 400 to 500 million per launch. And this is very expensive. Again, the conventional developments that we've seen have been rockets that have been designed to bring the cargo up, but there hasn't really been much development there, and hence why it's always been that way. But the private space race, at least these three companies that we've seen so far, from Virgin all the way to SpaceX, we have seen them, again, trying to spur up space tourism to design launching platforms and technologies, and of course vehicles, that are reusable. And the idea for them is to try to create ways of actually launching and potentially reusing the same launch vehicles, again, so to bring down the, the cost of launch. And there really is a very significant potential of this in terms of its contribution to the economy, if they can actually succeed. Because what we will see in the next 10 years, really, within the developments here, is that the cost of actually sending things into space will be dramatically reduced. The estimates at the moment for a cost of launch from SpaceX itself is about 30 to I think roughly 40 million dollars at the moment. So it is incredibly cheaper. And of course, this is again just the starting point as we see more developments here in the technology that's spurred by the private interest. And they say, of course, to facilitate for space tourism, delivering people back and forth. The overall cost of actually bringing things into space for economic reasons, commercial reasons, cargo, will be so much cheaper. That would mean that countries and also companies that are planning to potentially have infrastructural presence in space will now actually be more viable than ever before. Countries that are more poor and also of course it's business participants that now have potentially a private means of sending things up into space, primarily being probably satellites. The overall economic chain that benefits from it is just undeniable. And so there is this really virtuous effect that comes from the developments that we're seeing here. 
Now, thirdly, also talking about what it means for scientific discovery and experimentation. So far, the flights have really been focused on suborbital and orbital, right? And again, so far, the ones we've seen have been suborbital. But again, most of the missions in the past, in terms of what scientists could actually do and plan out, were really, really carefully planned because they didn't have many windows of actually launching something up into space. And so now with the private developments here, we'll have more opportunities and also potentially more opportunities for scientific research, hopefully with more and more participants and launches there will be a lot of activities here as well in terms of the sort of research we could do in space, whether it's suborbital, or orbital, or even much more. But again, the window for experimentation has actually gone up from this, and it is just incredible if you think about that. And finally and fourthly, and I think what we can end with tonight's late chat is the benefit of what some philosophers have actually called the overview effect. Now, what is the overview effect? You see, as humans, we have been so myopic, we have been so short-sighted, we've been so focused on everything that's in front of us, all of our issues, all of our conflicts, all of the things that have bothered us. And when you actually go to space, it is a very transformative experience, especially from an existential sort of viewpoint. Because what you finally see when you're there, especially when you look back to Earth, is just realize how minuscule everything is. Nice appreciation of what it really means to be human. One of my idols, Carl Sagan, who's a cosmologist and he's written many books and he really sums up perfectly. He talks about how all these things about geopolitics and all these issues and dramas that we go through every day, when you actually look at Earth from space and Earth just becomes reduced to this pale blue dot and you just realize that there really is no point of many of the conflicts that we have because ultimately humanity, we are united together in the vast cosmos. We are one pale blue dot and we are one single planet. And it really has this sort of humbling effect. And there's this great majesty about it. It really does sort of change your view of things, especially when you study further into cosmology. It really gives you a greater sense of appreciation of what it means to be alive. And that a lot of things that we generally worry about on a personal level, and also even a geopolitical level, ultimately in the vastness and the perspective of the cosmos and universe, it is pointless. And instead of that, we should be united as a civilization of humanity in the vastness of space. Because again, this pale blue dot, when you look at it from that distance, it's home for all of us. And so there's something really beautiful about that. This overview effect generally brings about this progressive change in your perspective. And hopefully with more people going to space, that they gain this perspective and it brings so much more to them. I think even on the personal level, there's something very, very transformative. I once read this a biography from this astronaut who talked about his first space walk and I thought it was brilliant because he talked about how your entire life you've been brought up to believe that when you're at a certain height, very high up, and if you were to jump off, and naturally many people would fear heights, you would be absolutely afraid because if you were to do that your whole life you've been taught, you've been ingrained that you would fall to your death from so high up. But the first time when he was actually propped up to do the spacewalk and he's all geared up in a suit and the shuttle door opened and he was standing on the edge of the space station about to go out to do the maintenance and he was looking down and he saw Earth and he was so high up and he was absolutely afraid because his whole life has been ingrained to believe that he would fall. And the moment when he stepped off, fully believing that he would fall, he didn't. Instead, he floated. And he mentioned how magical that felt like if magic ever existed that was it and that truly was transformative so to me i think the most significant thing that we'll see in these private endeavors in space and also its increasing accessibility as more and more people go to space is that we'll not only see its inclusiveness its economic benefits its scientific progressions but ultimately also philosophical potentially spiritual growth of what it means to be us humans and what it means to be citizens of earth and I think that truly is incredible.